we first contacted you pretty shortly after um, the terrible situation in Uvalde, Texas. Mm -hmm. Everyone's had a little time to digest this, and it's clear that, for the most part, America is saying something has to happen. Even people I've interviewed who were previously first um, very strong advocates of gun rights. So you've had time to digest this. Where are you falling on this? Is it more gun laws? Is it school safety? People want specifics. And we all do. And it's just, um, as a parent, it's just the nightmare scenario. It's just horrific what happened and, and happened again. And of course, we need to do something. Uh, that's what um, everyone is calling for. But the fact is, we have done something, and more than just something. We've passed, uh, House Republicans over the past five years have passed multiple pieces of legislation to deal with the problem of mass violence in our, our country. We passed the 21st Century Cures Act, which incorporated the most sweeping mental health reform in our history, um, the Helping Families and Mental Health Crisis Act. We passed the, uh, the, the Fix NICS Act in 2017, which upgraded and enhanced the National Instant Criminal Background Check System. Uh, we also uh, uh, passed uh, le uh, legislation uh, called the STOP Act, uh, Stop School Violence Act, which uh, provided a historic amount of uh, res resources to schools, to harden schools, to provide resources for uh, guidance counselors and mental health individuals and resource officers for, for schools. Uh, and so we clearly know that more needs to be done. What is it that needs to be done? Well, uh, I'm a co-sponsor of two pieces of legislation. I voted for one of them the other night, the Stop Two Act, which would reprogram about $7 billion from unspent COVID funds uh, to uh, double the amount of resources available for school security upgrades. Mm -hmm. We were able to secure one of those grants for the Menifee County Public School System just recently. Okay. Um, and a lot of these school boards want more resources for that. Um, it's not just about hardening schools though. It's also about softening schools. Having the mental health resources, the uh, counselors, the administrators have the training to identify a troubled individual and stop violence before it happens. And then there's some more upgrades that need to obviously happen with our uh, instant criminal background check system. In both the Buffalo shooting case right. and in the Uvalde case, these were young, troubled individuals who should have never been able to purchase uh, these firearms and the ammunition, but they passed a background check. So what is it about our background check system that's flawed? It's not that it's not universal, as some say, it's that the data within the, the, the database is not complete. Okay. Uh, the Buffalo shooter, for example, was hospitalized for mental health concerns. Uh, this individual had uh, threatened a shooting, was hospitalized, released, but the fact that he had received that mental health treatment did not trigger a referral to the, to the NICS system. There is a bill I'm co-sponsoring that would, once again, enhance the data that goes into the background check system so so troubled individuals like these could not, at the point of sale, pass a background check. At the point of sale also, we see more and more data that 18-year-olds' brains are not fully developed. Their judgment, um, add on COVID, and almost two years of being alone at home. What's wrong with raising that assault rifle age limit to 21? Yeah, well, one of the reasons is the, is the, the, the Constitution. Uh, the Ninth Circuit Court of Appeals in California just last month, before the Uvalde shooting, one of the most liberal federal uh, judicial circuits in the country held that the Second Amendment and the Supreme Court Heller decision uh, did not permit an absolute ban on the, the purchase of firearms for individuals 18 to 21. Uh, that was a federal uh, court ruling interpreting the Second Amendment. It was from a liberal court. Uh, and so what we have to do is we have to do everything we can to prevent uh, these kinds of uh, tragedies from happening consistent with the Constitution because we don't want to pass a bill that just gets struck down. We want to do something, but do something that works, do something that's going to be effective, do something that's going to be constitutional and pass muster in federal court judicial review. Um, clearly. Uh, we have a problem with 
youth mental health in this country. And there are individuals, as the Buffalo shooter and the Uvalde shooter are examples of this, also uh, the, the uh, Stoneman High School in Florida, mm -hmm. the Parkland shooting was also a, a young person. Uh, the tragedy that happened in Connecticut, that was also a young person who, who mm -hmm. murdered his own mother and used and stole the weapons. Yeah. So there was no background check in that, in that right. case. So we know we have a mental health crisis going on in this country, particularly in the aftermath of COVID. The question is, are we permitted under the Constitution to have a blanket, blanket ban um, on uh, the purchase of firearms for young people who are not mentally troubled, who are responsible, uh, law-abiding gun owners? The Second Amendment protects them as well, especially when you consider these are individuals that we are asking men and women to put on the nation's uniform and serve our country. So a blanket ban is not constitutional. It's overly inclusive. We need to focus on the individuals who are truly troubled and make sure that they are not allowed to ac access these weapons.